All right, guys, good morning to y'all here on YouTube. Hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday here. We've got a severe weather tropics update for you guys here this morning. Uh, some good news and some bad news. We're going to kind of dive into uh, what we're seeing with the differences in our modeling here this afternoon uh, across the tropics with both 94L and 93L. Uh, one potentially heading towards our direction, another one going out to sea or both going out to sea. Uh, lots of scenarios on the table here for this morning. We're going to kind of break that down here. I will start out here with upper level satellite imagery across the United States. Where we did have the chance for a big severe weather event yesterday that actually did not unfold and that was due to uh, our wind profiles were just more in a uh, same direction with our upper level winds so our lower level winds and our upper level winds were more of the same direction you typically want to see that wind direction change with height in order to see a higher tornado risk yesterday's tornado risk was a lot more conditional meaning it would have happened maybe have happened could have not have happened and it didn't really happen we ended up seeing more of a messier mode of convection with lots of flash flooding and some wind and some hail out there we had a uh, damage report over in sally saw oklahoma for the potential for either a brief tornado or microburst. We're going to kind of wait for that data to come in and see what the National Weather Service thinks on that. But other than that, really not much of anything yesterday. And then we had one late tornado warning that finally happened west of Hot Springs yesterday just for some weak rotation that tornado was also not confirmed either so um other than that we do have a little bit of severe weather today from texas back up into the ohio valley and then another load in day of severe weather tomorrow other than that severe weather is basically going to exit the picture again as we go into the weekend here and we're really just going to be watching the tropics watching the tropics watching the tropics and it's going to be more of a quieter pattern again across the united states until we get into the month of october so um here on satellite imagery this morning we do have that upper level load that is continuing to work its way eastward here there's a chance for a couple of severe storms today basically from kentucky back down here to texas back through the uh, lower 48 here into the southeast. We'll be watching for that wind and that hail threat today. Very low in chance of a tornado, but if we were to get a tornado, it could be up here near the boundary along western Kentucky, Tennessee, or eastern or portions of Arkansas. So we'll kind of keep an eye on that today. If something happens, we'll go live for it. But other than that, um, a very conditional threat this afternoon there. Taking a look here at the Atlantic Basin this morning, we do have Hurricane Gabrielle still on its way east here, heading toward the Azores, where we're expecting hurricane force winds uh, by Saturday or Sunday. And then eventually this is going to make its way towards Spain. Well, we'll have more impacts there. And if you can see on the bottom of your screen here as well, we do have 93L on the right side here and 94L, 93L looking more impressive. And there's really, like I said, guys, a million scenarios here, really technically three, either both of these systems get close to the United States and they merge or they, you know, rotate around each other with the Fujiwara effect, or, you know, we get one system crashing into the East Coast, one going out to sea. More than likely 93L, the one up here on the right side of your screen is going to do a recurve. There's a pretty decent amount of model support on that. It's going to get close uh, to the United States, but it's going to more than likely recurve and eventually it's going to have potentially a tugging motion on what happens with 93L. If we get a, you know, slower, longer track here with 94L down here near the uh, islands here and it, you know, gets over the Bahamas and kind of sits and hangs out and, you know, we wait for this trough up here to move through. There's just, like I said, a million different scenarios. We'll talk more about it in the live stream later today, uh, but I want you guys to understand this is probably going to be a very, very complex forecast all the way up to the end of this event. Whether we get any landfalls, whether we don't get anything, right now the GFS doesn't like the idea of any landfalls. It basically merges these two and then takes them out to see with potentially one being a major hurricane and one being a low in tropical depression or storm. The European has two hurricanes potentially heading toward the United States, one going out to eventually see and then one coming close and then eventually getting pulled off uh, out to sea. Uh, there's not really per se any dermatistic runs that have a landfall, but there are ensembles. There are some Euro ensembles that have land interaction. There are the Google Deep AI does. The GFS still not really showing that at all, mostly kind of an error potentially with that. We'll kind of have to see how things go through the next couple of days here. Like I said, it's going to be a very, very complex forecast uh, trying to figure out what in fact is going to happen as we go through the next couple of days. And you guys can, can see here on your screen, uh, we do now have officially two of the higher likelihood chances here of tropical cyclone formation. There is Gabrielle on the top right of your screen that is going east. We do have a 90-90% chance of tropical cyclone formation in the next 48 hours here. So we will more than likely get Humberto off of 93L here, that northern storm, storm first. And then we will get eventually here if this other one develops, which the likelihood is very high, 30-80% here. Uh, more of a higher chance in the long term range as we go closer to the end of the weekend. Uh, we will more than likely see our I named storm next. And like I said, where and how close these are together. Uh, if you guys watched my video last night that I posted, we'll kind of explain more in depth on where the steering mechanisms are. We've got a cutoff flow that could kind of sit here and renegade and, you know, push these systems east or pull them north. Or, you know, like I said, there's just about a million scenarios unlike what we would typically have when we're talking about one tropical system where we, we would know more likelihood of what's going to be, you know, steering these systems. So uh, we'll keep you guys updated. I also do think we 
we'll probably get another area to watch back over here off the coast of Africa as we see another wave moving off. And we've got to start watching down here in the Caribbean a lot of overnight support uh, for another tropical system as we enter the first week of October next week down here in the Caribbean. And you guys know as much as I know is if we get any tropical cyclone development down here, uh, we will more than likely end up getting something big out of it because the water temperatures are so dadgum warm. So we haven't had anything in the Caribbean this year and we haven't had anything in the Gulf and we are starting to see the GFS, the GFS ensembles. There are some icon and European ensembles that are starting to hint at something down here. So Best case scenario, both of these storms that we're watching over here in the Atlantic Basin end up recurving. That's best case scenario. We may get some waves uh, and some impacts to the Bahamas and up the East Coast in terms of the waves, the wind potential. Uh, but in terms of any landfall in interaction right now, that's still on the table, but also kind of 50-50 right now. So we'll see as we go through the next couple of days how these systems develop, it, how they pull on each other, how they tug on each other, all of that there. Here is the GFS ensembles here from this morning. And I want you guys to look at the first thing here. Look at all of the support here for something in the Gulf as we go towards the 10th or the 8th and the 10th of October. I know that's a ways, ways out here. We're, you know, looking long range at this point and you're like, why are we talking about it if it's over 10 days out? That's a lot of support. And, you know, we've talked about potentially something getting going past the first week of October, you know, into the, you know, the middle of October here. This is something to watch. We're going to keep our eyes on this one here because I think this is the most support I've seen uh, out of the potential for a tropical system, at least on the GFS run here. We all know the GFS likes to go back and forth with different things here, uh, but this is a pretty decent amount of support. So we're going to keep an eye on this and see how this goes, but you can notice though, uh, taking a look at both 94L and 93L, lesser development with the GFS. I don't know why it's doing that. It's known for kind of being biased towards situations like that. So a little bit lesser, some land interaction, some not, and then 94 getting close, but then moving moving out to sea here. So GFS, we'll watch and see what happens. I'll see if the if it recurves or you know any updates happen with the 12Z this afternoon. When I post my TikTok video on there, we'll have an update version on that later on this afternoon. So uh, if you're watching here on YouTube, we'll have an, an updated video over on TikTok once those updates come out there. Uh, taking a look here at the European ensembles, this is what I was kind of more in sync with here was uh, 94L getting pretty close and then eventually more than likely recurving. But then you have 93L, a little bit weaker, kind of hanging out here over Florida Bahamas uh, through early next week and then eventually maybe having some land interaction. So we'll once again see how uh, these ensembles recorrect themselves later on this afternoon. If we shift more of a recurve, if we don't shift a recurve, we'll kind of see what happens with it. It looks like the European and the Google Deep AI are kind of on their own island compared to what the GFS is doing, which sounds about right. Um, that's typically how that works in the tropics most times and not. We're also getting some European support down here for another wave as we go toward the beginning of next week. So that's why I'm watching down here in the Caribbean and the Gulf potentially for something and then maybe even another wave here and then something to watch over here. So it's October, guys, almost. The tropics are active as we expected would happen. And, you know, we're going to be busy, busy talking about it. And then taking a look here at the Google Deep AI runs here, you can see 94L mostly recurving. And then 93L is just all over the place. Or sorry, 94L is all over the place here. 93L to the east here, uh, more than likely on a recurve. So we're going to keep you guys updated here on the tropics. I don't see any major uh, concerns for United States impacts in terms of a landfall right now. It's still there existing. Um, I just want you guys from the Bahamas up to, you know, Puerto Rico, Florida. If you're anywhere on the East Coast, guys, you got to be watching this system. You got to be paying attention to it. You can't just shrug it off. More than likely, hopefully these systems will, you know, move around each other and get curved out to sea would be best case scenario, but we don't know that for certain yet. So we're going to hope and pray that that's the situation that happens because we don't want any landfalling tropical storms or hurricanes because of the way the season has gone. Most of the systems that had developed have actually become major hurricanes. So we don't want to see that happen. So a lot of things to account for here. We'll keep you guys updated on that there. And we will take a look here at severe weather forecast for this afternoon as well and we do have actually that's the day two outlook there we go here's today's outlook here we have a marginal risk that goes from western and central kentucky southern illinois back down here into the plains this is mostly going to be for a wind threat where winds could exceed 60 to 70 miles per hour here we do have a less than two percent tornado risk but not zero we'll see what spc does when they update here in just a few minutes but we are going to be watching for that threat for a low end tornado risk uh anywhere in that marginal risk zone wind threat at 50 or at wind threat at five percent and hail threat there less than five percent so more of a wind threat today we'll keep you guys updated on that there and then tomorrow, taking a look here as this front moves off the coast here, we will eventually see uh, the chance for, once again, some severe weather, potentially from Boston, Massachusetts, all the way down here to the panhandle of Florida with 60 mile per hour winds and maybe a brief isolated tornado and some small hail out there. So not expecting anything too crazy there. Taking a look at day three, not a lot to talk about. General thunderstorms as that trough kind of renegades and sits off the east coast here. And then eventually, as we go towards the rest of next weekend here, this coming up weekend, we're not really looking at any severe weather uh, really anytime soon again. It's going to basically vanish again as we, you know, just saw so 
that's some good news to talk about there. Let's break down the timing here of what's going to be happening here across the Ohio River Valley here and down into the southeast today. We can see showers and thunderstorms initiating here around 3 or 4 o'clock this afternoon. Got to watch some of these little popcorn bean uh, cells up here near Kentucky, Tennessee, eastern Illinois, eastern Missouri, just for the potential for an isolated cold air funnel or maybe even a potential brief tornado. I think the tornado threat is very, very low today. But if we do get anything, this is where that potential risk would be at. Maybe even a chance at an isolated tour up toward north, uh, northern Mississippi, Alabama here. But that higher threat would be up towards... Uh, uh, where that triple point is where your low is kind of hanging out where there's more vorticity there's really not a lot of vorticity with today's setup but if there were to be anything that's what we're looking at the mostly widespread coverage damaging winds here if anything up to 60 miles per hour some small hail but i think mostly everybody's just going to get some general thunderstorms out there today there's just not a lot of instability to work with the further north you go the further south you go a little bit more instability so we'll like i said just see how things play out here but most of these storms between two and three o'clock this afternoon and then ending by later on around midnight tonight as that low pushes off to the northeast so We'll also get some beneficial rainfall uh, in terms of what happens there. Let's briefly talk about what's going to be happening in terms of the next couple of days here. There's our shortwave trough that's going to be moving through. Eventually, we'll be gone off the coast by Thursday, Friday. It does leave a low around here, and this is what's going to help either move our tropical waves out to sea or bring them closer. So we're going to have to, like I said, watch, 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 watch each update and each run that comes out because that's very, very important to helping these forecasts uh, get out to you guys here. So more than likely, once the National Hurricane Center designates uh, a, a tropical depression with either one of these systems here, we'll start to see that cone and what things are going to look like once these models grasp onto it we're also going to be getting uh the national hurricane center recon will be starting to go out there either today or tomorrow to start getting an idea of what this system is actually doing in terms of raw data coming in so um saturday into sunday here pretty quiet weekend upper level uh basically ridge develops here we're basically stuck again in another little miniature omega block pattern that's that omega symbol you see there low on one side over the uh portions of the four corners here we will see some more rainfall back here into southern california in portions of western arizona with some thunderstorms and some rain back down here into the southeast through the weekend and then eventually as we go into next week, we will see that system push out, and then eventually we enter the picture where we could see some more severe weather as we go toward the middle and end of next week here. We'll have to see how the troughing plays out past October 1st here, uh, but it does look to be we could see a little disturbance up into the high plains again, and then eventually after that, things just become a little bit more uncertain, and you can see down here what we may be dealing with in the future so um that's a little bit way too far out to you know even comprehend if we're going to get a hurricane in florida in like three weeks but anyways you guys know that model runs that far out you don't buy that stuff but um we'll see what happens over the next couple of days i'll show you those rainfall totals here in the next seven to ten days you guys can kind of get an idea of what we're going to be looking at here and most of that rainfall here is actually going to fall through the Ohio Valley in the southeast. So a pretty good soaking of one to three inches of rain uh, through next early week. And then eventually we'll start to cut off that rain preset pattern. We'll see some rain down here, maybe in a Texas, finally down here towards uh, the Azores, or not the Azores, but the Four Corners. Uh, and then, you know, we'll start to more talk more about what's going to happen as we go into the month of October in the next couple of days. So other than that, guys, we'll keep you all updated. I'll have a new video on TikTok here in just a little bit once afternoon updates come out. If you look for those, um, be safe, guys. Have a wonderful day out there and we'll see you all tomorrow.